for the future. We want to do it the most natural possible. So taste explosions, they're super healthy. A lot of vitamins are full of, of nutrients. We try to imitate nature, talking with experts, vertical farming, and discussing and showing and trying and prototyping and testing fish with shrimps, mussel, crabs, snails, packed with umami. Our ecosystem Hello everybody, I'm here today with Luca Grandjean from the Swiss startup Umami. They're based in Zurich and they produce uh, mainly microgreens, but also have a lot of other very interesting things going on there. Thank you very much, Luca, for your time with us today. Could you tell me a bit about yourself and how you got to work at Umami? Hi everybody, my background, I have a bachelor's degree in business economics went on to work into the watch industry and from there went a little bit hazard um, did a master's degree at university of gastronomic sciences in polenza in italy where i specialize in high quality products came back to switzerland um, worked as procurement manager for hellofresh switzerland did a traineeship program in the industrial department of Migro and started my journey at Umami in May 2019. We'll hit my two years mark soon. And um, so I've been following Umami quite a long time. Uh, one of the founder, Robin, was my roommate in St. Gallen. And so um, I've been following them and, and helping them from early years on, unofficially. Mm -hmm. So and uh, yeah, so now I'm with Robin and Dennis, uh, managing or co-managing director. Um, my departments are mostly the HR, so a lot of uh, personal recruiting. Uh, as well as gastronomy and representation. So it's a lot about events and media. Mm -hmm. So it's quite a wide spectrum that you have. Exactly. I think that's, that's the interesting part of the job is that not every day is different. And you're still a small, we're still a small company and have to, to, to do a lot of different things. Are you still considered a startup or how many people work at Umami at the moment? So we're 12. Um, so in my own counting time, I would say the start of Human was 2018. So we will be, we're three years old. I mean, even if they created the company uh, much earlier in, um, in 2016, but between 2016, 2018, there was a lot of prototyping and not a lot of work going in from everybody. Mm -hmm. So oh, yes, I consider ourselves still a startup. So Umami focuses mainly or used to focus mainly on microgreens. Could you explain to the people what are microgreens exactly? So microgreens is just um, a state of growth for a plant. Mm -hmm. So it's usually you call it microgreen as soon as it hits the first leaf. And in this state, it has the most nutrients and vitamins. Um, but almost every plant or every plant goes through a microgreen phase where it has a first leaf. And that's why we grow microgreens because they're super healthy and have a lot of vitamins and are full of, of nutrients. And we often say that the microgreen state is, is where they're like teenager full of power and uh, are at uh, just want to grow. And mm. yeah. I guess it's sprouts also, right? Would, would, is that the same? No, thing? no. Uh, sprouts, microgreens are different. So sprouts is basically just the root part growing out oh. of uh, and doesn't need light. So those are the big differences is that if you have sprouts, you don't need light. And usually, usually you, you just water the, um, the crops and um mix them but you don't need light and with microgreens you need uh, to have something which gives um the root something to hold on so in our case it's hemp but you could grow it in 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 um in soil mm -hmm. 
or as sprouts you don't grow in soils so mm -hmm. that's, that's the difference and um i was wondering about the name umami because umami comes from japanese it means like hearty or meaty flavor how does that connect to greens so um the, the name came up when we tasted those microgreens in our system and they have so much taste they're like little taste explosions that soon we had uh, the connection to umami where um, umami is also glutamate which makes everything better mm -hmm. so that's one part but the other part is also that our idea is not just microgreens it's a holistic approach of an ecosystem so we have different types of animals here fish uh, shrimps mussels which are if you uh, cook them or make a sauce out of them also packed with with umami so mm -hmm. it's umami shouldn't just go with the macarines, but with the holistic approach of an ecosystem and how we grow. So you grow the microgreens, but for the microgreens, you also have, um, you use your own water, with your, you have your own fish tanks, and then you use that water from the fish ponds to uh, water your microgreens. So, and then that water that isn't used flows back into the tanks. How, 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 does, this, um, how does this system work? And yeah, how did you come up with this? Okay, so at base, we're uh, aquaponic, we're an aquaponic system. Mm -hmm. So an aquaponic system is a system where you, it's a circular system. So we start with a fish. Mm -hmm. This fish gets food, which is an input from our side, and eats the food, and the food comes out at the other end. Um, this food is then digested by bacteria and changed into fertilizer. This fertilizer uh, is then taken in by the plants. At the same time, they, they can grow with, with the fertilizer, but um, clean the water at the same time. Mm -hmm. So that the fish have a clean uh, system again. So that's aquaponic at base. Uh, aquaponic is a very old system used, for example, for, for rice in Asia. Mm -hmm. What we did is we we try to imitate nature or to imitate nature to the most possible so it wasn't just one type of fish one type of plant is we try to have more animals so not just fish we have shrimps mussels crabs snails a lot of bacteria and at the same time have also different plants so they would clean the water better but at the same time give nutrients to the water from the plants. So you have more in the phosphorus side. That's another topic if you go into chemicals. But the goal was to have uh, an ecosystem uh, and where I think the keyword is indoor permaculture. And permaculture is in, in agronomy, it's, it's a way to, to cultivate things, but in, in an ecosystem that everything works together. And that's our approach. And we want to do the same here. Uh, at umami where everything works together is the most complex possible but at the end also you get better nutrients for the plants a to use less water as you explained so it's a circular system where mm -hmm. we're just where or the plants just take the water they need mm -hmm. so it does go into the soil and at the same time this the system is complex and can regulate itself I think that's the main point is, is we try to, to imitate nature and have it inside here. Was this the starting idea or was the starting idea the, the end product? Or was it always the, the key to have this aquaponic system? No, I think the, the starting idea was always to have this ecosystem. There are a lot of problems currently in the world where mass production, et cetera, et cetera, too much meat, uh, the soils are going bad. I think there are very uh, topics we are, are, are very important. And you see that the vertical farming, indoor farming becomes more and more important. Mm -hmm. So for, all, for us, it was, it's a topic for the future, but we want to do it the most natural possible. And at the same time, it was always the goal to have this indoor permaculture where you can grow in a system and 
have an output of a lot of different things, not just one plant or have mm -hmm. one tomato, but to have mac greens, tomatoes, fish, shrimps. So the goal was always to have this, this holistic approach for a system. And as you said, with microgreens, microgreens was the first step. It was also an economical reason um, compared to where when we started, there wasn't too much money around. So we needed to prototype, we needed to, to, to build that thing. And microgreens were a good way to, to, to test it because microgreens have a quite short uh, life cycle. Mm -hmm. So whereas within two weeks, you get results. And compared to tomatoes or, or, or cucumbers, you, you would grow it for three, four or five months and have a result. And after that, yeah, it doesn't work. If it, if it doesn't work, yeah, it would, it would be bad for the economical part of the company. So microgreens were, um, uh, I would say it's an, an econo a logical economical step in the growth of, of the company. Okay, I really like the term that you use, indoor permaculture, because I think that uh, sums it up quite nicely that you have a holistic yeah. approach, but it's um, a new a new thing. It's not uh, outside in nature, but you're remaking nature inside. Um, how many, just to give the people listening an idea, how many um, types of plants and types of animals are in the system at the moment? Okay, so types of plants, I don't even know. I would go from... 100 different plants mm -hmm. um, so we also have three different modules where we have different climate zones where uh, with every different climate zone you have different plants growing in our ecosystem mm -hmm. and with the animals we i would say we have 50 big varieties of animals and a lot of small ones which probably we can't even count but from we have i think seven eight different types of fish uh two types of shrimps uh three types of snails one type of crab one type of mussel and that's just for the bigger one and then you go down you have smaller fish you have insects we have um spiders uh, there's a lot of things and in, in overall of those big varieties we have over seven thousand animals in our ecosystem which of course the most important ones are the fish Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then the others you're not intentionally growing them or keeping them they just have to say come into the system both so as i mentioned before the goal was always to to be able to have a lot of output of different things from the system and because it's aquaponics at base the fish are very important so you want to grow fish and be able to sell fish mm -hmm. but you also want to grow other things and sell them but it has to be it may, has to, to make sense so for example i don't know those are types of snails if we could sell them but um of course plants we want to have a big variety of plants you can sell um we are trying to grow uh, shrimps which we were we which we want to be able to sell and so we have a lot of, of different variety also in the animal section mm -hmm. I know that the system is hidden behind the curtain behind you. Is it, yeah. is it possible cool. for you to give a peek? Yes. So, I mean, behind the, the curtain is just uh, wood. So we just quickly go through the door. But it's here. So uh, that's basically our ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And our vertical farm where the micro green grows. Mm, nice, yeah. And this is the fish pond here, this pond. So the fish can be from down here, mm -hmm. here and here. So they can move freely. And um, and they're here, but there are also there are smaller fish in here where we have like little rivers uh, flowing through where you have snails, but at the same time, also in the vertical farm, we have snails in here, a little fish, which are bas basically below the microgreens. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Oh, interesting. Oh, very nice. Thank you for, for that, for showing us that. The idea is you cut the microgreens, you, you, you mow over the microgreens and sell the top part, right? Then exactly. They... But 
yeah, so um, we do both. Uh, most of our mac greens we, we cut mm. and grow the, the, the cut part. But for gastronomy, we also have like little mats uh, with the mac greens on it where we sell it still live. Mm -hmm. so, uh, yeah. Then you mentioned that you actually got a license to sell the fish from the system as well. Exactly. So uh, we had basically a license to to elevate them, um, to let them grow here, to get babies. And mm -hmm. now from 2021 on, we have a license to sell them. So now we're, we're doing a program where we're focusing, focusing but uh, where we're planning how we want to do it because there are a lot of, of questions how because we're still selling microgreens and we have to check if sale of fish i mean for more for hygienic reasons we have to check out a lot of things mm -hmm. and what do you do with the killing of the fish do you do it here uh, do you have to do it out uh, outside so there are a lot of, of still open question we have to to answer to be able to, to sell the fish you have quite an interesting setup, as we saw, but then you have things like um, you created your own types of lights that use the water to cool down the light and warm up the water at the same time. As we're using a circular economy to, to, to grow our microgreens, we're also trying to, to have this, this circular thinking in all other things. So, for example, our lights are an own construction where the weather passes through the lights cools down the lights at the same time the water of the ecosystem gets warmed up so we don't need another um, heating lamp inside the water um, so we are also trying so it's important to be on the technical side too as well as on the natural side um, for example we also simulate the, the rhythm of of the plants where we have a sleep cycle and a waking up cycle where you you start with the sunrise and the sunset that's mm -hmm. it's also it's it's good for the plants to to, to simulate their, their normal uh, uh, rhythm, but at the same time you also save uh, electricity because you don't go one hundred percent in. Do you adjust it to the normal daylight that's outside? No, our plants have has su have summer all year long. Yeah, but um, you adjust it to a to a summer cycle mm -hmm. with, the sun, with the sunrise and sunset, where it, through one half. From one to one and a half hour to have uh, the sunrise mm. and to say at, at the evening where they can go to sleep and you just it's not like you, you turn it off at once and the plants have no light it's like oh now you have you can go to sleep and it's better for the plants um yeah for the fish i assume as well for the other animals yeah, yeah. too i mean it's for the ecosystem it's, it's trying to have the most natural possible you quickly mentioned also that it's a type of indoor um, culture, obviously, but then also um, urban farming and uh, vertical gardening. Um, yeah. How is how is uh, umami different from the traditional vertical gardening? I would say we're not that different. The big difference is our ecosystem that we try to do it the most natural way possible, uh, where everything comes from inside the system so we only here in this system we only add fish food mm -hmm. and in in other vertical farms it's it's i would say it's usually there is more uh computer-based um technology fertilizer where you control it on a computer you you have um fertilizer which come from the outside of course, you need less than in, in if you fertilize uh, outdoor, but you still have uh, fertilizer, which you, you add, uh, you check it on the computer, um, much more ro robots. I think those, those are a big difference, but it doesn't mean that we in future won't use robots. Mm -hmm. But I think it's important to have this natural part and where you also get those macronutrients into the water and not just have it from the fertilizer, which maybe it's just on a micro basis. Mm -hmm. yeah, because the way I understood it is that uh, in vertical farming that you add, or the plants are basically hang, the roots are hanging in, in water and they don't necessarily need a substrate. And then you just give all the nutrients into the water. Yeah, so, so it, de it depends. You can have vertical system where you don't use a substrate you have some which use a substrate. Um, it, it's more your, the architecture of the build. Um, at base, 
their, their uh, hydroponic system. So where the plant grows in water. Mm -hmm. um, of course, if you grow it to the side, you, you, you need a way where the roots can hold. But the, 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 the idea is the same that you have nutrients in water and the plant, plant can take them and grow with them. And that umami, are you um, still, are you doing uh, research? Are you thinking of what you can uh, improve in, in your system? Absolutely. I think that that's a very important part of our daily life is, is how to improve, how to make it better. And I think there will be also something for the future, which we will focus even more on. Uh, it's the whole biological side, um, the testing new products, which should fit into the system. And I think that's super important. And um, also the, the, the whole how to say um, scholar sign of it, I think to, to, to do testing, but, but work with universities, um, that's gonna be super interesting. And do you have any uh, next big steps that are, that are in line for Umami? Yes, yeah, so um, next big steps, uh, we want to expand Umami or uh, outside of Switzerland. Mm -hmm. The goal is uh, end of 2021, start 2022, to go abroad, um, probably with licensing system, and at the same time um, focus on the, the F and D part, where we really um, or R and D really research and development of more product of uh, how the system works, how we can have more and even more different products in the system that everything works well together. And does that mean you want to expand as umami or do you want to give um, your knowledge of the system to, to other people? I think both are open. Uh, I think for the system, the knowledge would be, it would be nice to, to give it to other people. Uh, also because then you need less funds to do yourself. Mm -hmm. um, but I think uh, we have uh, the options really to, to, to license it and give it to other people. And I think that's that's something we're working on to it, uh, and uh, ho hope that we can we are able to do it, end of 2021. Uh, exciting, yeah, I really like this idea of going into um, facilities that you don't really use anymore. For example, you started out in in a in a bank bunker, is that right? You... Yeah, even one before we were in the old bank archive. Yeah. And after the bank archive, we went into an old uh, bank uh, vault. I think mm -hmm. was, yeah, bank vault. And um, I think that's also a, a common idea and, and a thing which you have with urban farming is you can use places which are cheaper. You can go downstairs. Of course, here we are at the fourth floor. Um, it's also working. But the idea then is then you could do it everywhere. And in... in uh, uh, in the underground, uh, you see a lot of examples of other companies doing it underground, where, of course, the, um, the rent is cheaper. And also for your climb, you have a lot more constant things for mm -hmm. your climate. Um, that's, I think that's also a huge, um, a huge positive side where you use space which isn't used anymore. You had quite a diverse background um, coming from watchmaking and then going into food and uh, the culinary. What are some major positive aspects that you had personally working at um, Umami? I think uh, a responsibility of a team, a company, uh, that's something very positive. Um, then working for an idea, for a thing which makes a lot of sense, which is very forward and future thinking. Um, I think those are, are the most uh, positive aspects. Um, for me personally, it's, it's the freedom to, to, to work as, as I want, to, to be able to, to do the things I like. I think that's, are, those are huge uh, positive aspects that when you have this responsibility, there's no, nobody telling you, oh, you have to do it A or B style, uh, do it your way. And I think something very important is uh, making your own mistakes. Uh, that's the thing with responsibility, but it's how you learn. If you're doing the mistakes, 
your learning. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's important to make to make uh, mistakes. Do you have some uh, examples of something that went wrong, but that you were able to to save? Well, uh, something that went wrong. Um, oh, <laughs> I, used, uh, I would use here in an interview. Um, I'm not. Actually, I'm not. I'm, I'm just thinking. Um, so it's in the history of. Of, um, of Umami uh, already in 2018, um, we started working with one of our um, vegetable sellers. And as naive we were, uh, we tried to explain him how uh, the vegetable market uh, should work and uh, mm-hmm. um, functions. And uh, there, uh, yeah, for the three months we didn't work uh, with him again. We, we didn't work with him anymore because yeah we didn't know how it worked uh, we were very naive and just thought oh we, we, it, it will um we'll figure it out it will work and uh, it didn't uh, because we didn't listen to him um but at the same time we're quite bold that that we tried to work with him and three or two years later we're uh, reworking with him because he still remembers us and we were able to make this mistake and then of course through this learning work with other uh with other sellers mm-hmm. the other founders do they have a background in um, farming for example or are they also new to this to this field so that's quite interesting so the three founders all have a degree in economics or business economics um <laughs> but to give you one of the founders went to study economics just because he didn't want to, to teach him himself. Mm-hmm. So he's a very autodidactic person, uh, which is turned into water systems, fishing and mushrooms and those 3,500 mushrooms and how they work together and how ecosystems have to work together. And that's where a lot of our knowledge comes from. And then, of course, talking with, with experts and and getting them into and, and discussing and showing and trying and prototyping and testing. I think um, that gave us something of an advantage was this time I explained in the beginning from 2016 to 2018, where we did a lot of testing and, and trying out and doing it small. Um, and then from 2018 on came the decision to, to go 100% into Umami. It's um, a lot of hands-on experience and learning by doing yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, and 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 then of course uh, taking the microgreens, knocking at restaurants, uh, trying to sell it, um, and getting feedback. And we're still doing the same today. We're going to supermarkets, talking with the people, and how is it working? And same with restaurants. And I think that's that's something which is very important that you talk with with the people using or selling your products to get the feedback. And where can people get microgreens? Since uh, end of 2019, we're Swiss-wide, nationwide in uh, all bigger co-ops. Uh, we're in some Migros in Zurich, uh, Lucerne, uh, Fribourg, Neuchâtel, uh, Monor, uh, through Farmy, you can order it. Uh, we are, are at Globus. Um, we have, uh, we're working together with uh, Too Good To Go um, for our overproduction, selling it through Too Good To Go uh, so that we don't have to throw anything away. And yeah, I, th- I think it's quite a lot of places where you can buy our greens. And then, of course, you can taste them in a lot of restaurant, mm-hmm. uh, restaurants if they would be open. But uh, currently, yeah, it's a, it's a very difficult situation also for us. But I think you are using the time well. I'm, even though some parts are shut down, you, it gives you the opportunity to go into uh, other areas mm-hmm. as well. Exactly, yeah. We went through how you came up with the idea, how the founders uh, started out with the aquaponics system, what it's based on, uh, how the nutrients are distributed, how every plant and uh, animal fits into the system, mm-hmm. and then into some uh, personal, um, yeah, personal insights. So thank you very much, Luca. That was great uh, to have you on and yeah thank you very much and uh if anyone is is interested just send out an email or uh happy to answer any questions and as soon as um there is it's possible yeah 
we're uh, having events and letting people in. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah, I'll put that uh, down below, the links and your contacts. It's also a great thing. I saw some of the pictures and some videos of um, company events or just visiting events of seeing the facility. Looks very interesting. Yeah, I think that's something also very nice is, is this educational part where we're also working with school classes and uh, or if we have the events for companies or, or private persons. To, to learn about it and to, to circular economy and, and agronomy. And I think that's, that's a nice way to learn about uh, agriculture and something different and a very hot topic with vertical farming. And yeah, but that's very cool that we can also have those events. Great, thanks again, Luca. Yeah, thank you very much.